Hello, my name is Walter Unglob, and this is how to calculate forces in a cable structure. So cable structures rely on principles of physics that one will typically first encounter in an introductory mechanics course. And more generally, a course will be taken uh, known as statics, which considers the sum of all forces in a structure being equal to zero. This means that no component will start to move or change or accelerate because you want your structure to hold. So if I consider the simple example where I have two posts and a bridge suspended by these two cables, then I can determine, provided that all the forces are canceled out and this is indeed a statics problem, what the tension is if I know these different physical parameters. So this bridge, if it has a certain density, linear density, lambda, and a length L, then I know that since the density is equal to the total mass divided L, then the mass of the bridge will be equal to lambda times L. Now, we want to make a free body diagram for this simple example where I concentrate all the mass at the point where the two cables meet at the center, where these two cables are holding up the bridge. So I'm going to draw a dot and all the forces that are acting on that bridge, on the mass, keeping it in place. I have the force of gravity, which is equal to the mass of the bridge times the gravitational acceleration g, and I have two tension forces, and since the material of these cables is assumed to be identical, and there is symmetry about the center point in this uh, system, then this tension will be the same in magnitude as this tension. So I want to break this free body diagram into the horizontal and vertical components of all the forces to determine algebraically what this tension is. So if we look at the horizontal, if I draw a little projection along the x-axis for both of these tension vectors, I notice that they'll cancel each other out. And there's this angle theta here, so I have T times sine of theta is equal, surprise, surprise, to T sine of theta. I could rename this T1 and T2, but since I know I have symmetry, these two tension forces are going to be the same. So this doesn't help us, so let's look at the vertical component of all the forces. In the vertical components, I have the mass, and then I have the force of gravity, and then I have these two tension vectors, which come from projecting the original tension vectors onto the y-axis. So I have two times the original tension vector magnitude times cosine of the angle theta. And I know that these two vectors have to be equal in magnitude to the force of gravity, which is going to be equal to m times g. But I already determined, if all I'm given is the length and the density, that the mass is equal to the linear density times the length. So this is equal to lambda lg. Therefore, the tension is going to be equal to lambda lg divided 2 cosine theta for this simple example. Now I can use numbers in this example to calculate what the force would be. So if I consider a bridge that has a length equal to 100 meters and a linear density that's equal to 20 kilograms per meter, I know the gravitational acceleration, g, is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. I'm using MKS SI units. Then, 
If I consider an angle, theta, being equal to 45 degrees, I know that cosine of 45 degrees is going to be 1 over the square root of 2. And when I plug in all these numbers into my derived formula, I end up with a tension equal approximately to 13,873.44 newtons. So that's a lot of tension to hold up all of this mass. And this is how you can determine the cable forces in this cable structure. My name is Walter Unglob, and this is how to calculate the forces in cable structures.